Hello, I'm Jeffrey Mishlove. I can't help laughing at myself, I'm afraid. <laughs> because this is the third time I've <laughs> tried to make this monologue. <laughs> the first time, I forgot to activate the sound. So, there was no sound at all. The second time, I didn't even turn on the record button. So, <laughs> here we are, number three. I hope they get better each time. But I guess it goes to show you that um, I'm not perfect by any means. I'm <laughs> and I suppose the older I get, the more vulnerable I become to whatever imperfections remain in my character, uh, not to mention simply um, the uh, degrading of memory that occurs as one gets older, short-term memory. Uh, nevertheless, here I am and I'd like to share with you some thoughts in relationship to the uh, video conversation with Jason Reza Giorgiani that was released last Wednesday. The topic is Understanding the Trial by Franz Kafka. That's the great novel of Kafka. Uh, published posthumously because he never received much acclaim while he was alive. But if you were to visit the city of Prague today in the Czech Republic, virtually every bookstore has a little table of books by Kafka. He is considered the archetypal modern Czech writer. And he is a dark writer. He writes about the absurdities of modern life. He writes about the implacable dilemmas of being human. And in the trial, we see the protagonist caught up in a legal proceeding, a nightmarish scenario from which there is no escape. And he ends up dying or being killed at the end. And there is a sense in which this is an allegory of the human condition. We are all guilty of something. Now, Jason, in thinking about the novel, says, if only he had taken the whole situation with a little more humor, he could have laughed the whole thing off and never gone to trial at all, on the one hand. On the other hand, he said, but we are all guilty of this. None of us is an integrated personality. What does that mean? We are, in the words of William James, pluralistic beings. We have many, many different subpersonalities. Most of them, I suppose, uh, for a healthy person, get along well with each other. We have consistent values, consistent goals, consistent ideals. But who among us has never acted in a way inconsistent with how we think of ourselves, what we expect of ourselves? So, we all probably have something to feel guilty about unless we are Jesus Christ, perhaps the only perfect individual who ever lived if you accept uh, that brand of theology. But for those of us who are less than Christ-like, we have personalities that are not fully integrated. Even the uh, great psychiatrists like Carl Jung ran into terrible crises of the spirit due to the yeah, endeavor to fully integrate, to fully become a unified human being. Well, maybe it's an impossible task. How many people are suffering right at this very moment on the planet and you and I aren't doing anything about it? We're not lifting a finger in their behalf. You know, there is a lot that we all have to feel guilty about. If you're an American, like I am, you can feel guilty about living in a wealthy country that benefited from the labor of slaves for over a century. A country that benefited by uh, basically removing the Native Americans from their own land. A country that benefited from how many wars and the death of how many millions of people. 
Or if you want to go even deeper than what it is to be an American, we'll take it really deep. You are part of the living kingdom, the great chain of life on this planet. But every living creature only exists because it feeds on other living entities, plants, and animals. Unless you're the most primitive of lichens, that you can survive only on minerals, you survive because you feed on other life forms. We all do. We feed on other life forms, especially those of us who are not vegetarians. So, there's plenty, plenty to feel guilty about, and the list could go on and on and on. And the thing is this, parents use guilt as a way to manipulate their children. And not only that, not just parents and children, but manipulative people in general will find your guilty spots and work on them in order to gain a certain degree of power and control over you. How are you to address that? Here's my solution. <laughs> and, and maybe it's a little bit radical. Let go of guilt. You have nothing to feel guilty about. Now, what do I mean by that? Because surely your life can always be improved upon. There are probably habits you'd like to change, maybe some bad habits, as a matter of fact. I have some bad habits. Sometimes I overeat. Gluttony. <laughs> That's, I remember once <laughs> Gene Houston, my, one of my favorite teachers and mentors, was a good friend of the great anthropologist Margaret Mead. And she tells the story of how Margaret Mead said to her one day, What's your favorite vice? Mine is gluttony. Well, that gluttony is probably my favorite vice too. But if you think I'm going to uh, lose weight by making myself guilty about it, no. <laughs> you see, guilt is a form of self-punishment. If I feel guilty, I'm trying to punish myself. And punishing myself isn't going to help me to uh, develop better habits. I can let go of guilt a hundred percent. But in so doing, the key is to be responsible for myself. Not guilty, but responsible. Responsible means uh, making amends. And I'm in full agreement with the 12-step programs that talk about the importance of going back, finding people who you have hurt or mistreated uh, in one way or another, and letting them know that you're sorry and doing what you can to rectify the situation. And if you can't do that, do what you can to work on yourself, to address the situation that caused the problem to begin with. We all need to work on ourselves. It's a lifelong process. And I can tell you from my study uh, that even the Buddha could work on himself throughout his whole life. And surely, if it's true for the Buddha, it's probably true for everybody, although I'm not so sure about Jesus. Maybe he was born perfect, for all I know. I'm kind of inclined to want to think so, even though I'm Jewish. Uh, it's nice to think that one person in the whole history of humanity was fully integrated in a good, positive way. But let me ask you this question. Think about it. Are there areas where you do feel guilty? Are there areas where you are punishing yourself inwardly? Are you able to let go of that? What would it take for you to let go of that last little vestige of guilt? What do you need to do to be more responsible and less guilty? Where can you improve yourself along that dimension? And I'll leave you with that thought. Thank you for being with me.